good everybody welcome back to the rock and beards podcast it's your boy hsr with me today is they should know who i am yeah but just just say the damn name for the new people that's what the sub count goes up means new people are coming <laughs> yo guys this is jay all right so uh jay is with us from uh why the hell not with jay and costa you can link to that podcast that he does in the description below so why don't you tell us what album we are doing today sir Hydrograd from Sour Stone. Oh, Stone Sour, dude. Stone Sour. Really? Yeah, it's Stone Sour. I, I've been a fan of them for a while. They should um, be called Sour Stone. Maybe. So, yeah, if you don't want to hear us talk about Stone Sour for a minute, click yes. on the show more. You can skip ahead to where we actually talk about the song by song. In the meantime, when did you first encounter Stone Sour in your life, Jay? Never. Okay, so you've never listened to them before? I actually never heard them. I found out yesterday while I was listening to the, some of the songs from this new album with my friend uh, Costa, who I do the podcast with, uh, that the lead singer is the same singer for uh, Slipknot. Yes. What's his name? Chris something? Corey Taylor. Oh, wow. I'm completely off today. Completely Corey off. Taylor. Yeah, he's... So, uh, uh, I, I've heard Slipknot before, but I started listening to, I don't know, I've never heard of them, Stone Sour. Ah. Uh, so. For yeah, those no. people there, I apologize for getting their name wrong. I do this all the time. That's cool. So the reason we talk about it is just to add some context for you folks watching. That means Jay doesn't know who they are or much about them. Well, this is not really my genre of music at times. Right. So, so, like, I don't, I more bump on the more popular scene music and stuff. But with doing this podcast or vlog or whatever thing we like to do here, I've been learning a lot of new music. And, and that's the point. So on that note, I like Stone Sour for a while. Um, not anything of the more recent era. Uh, when I was in high school, I heard Bother and a couple of hits from that first album they did. I also learned today that apparently they were in Stone Sour, and then he kind of like bombed out to do Slipknot for a while, and then came back and made the band happen again. So if I'm factually incorrect, feel free to correct me, but that's what the Wikipedia told me. Um, on top of that, Come Whatever May came out, and that shit I bought when I was in like uh, college and whatnot. How long, ago? How long was this ago? Like maybe 20 years? No, like I was 18, 19, 20 maybe. So I was 20 in Sage Up, so like, so I don't years. know. 2005, six ish, around then. Stone Sour drops that album. He's 40 years Somewhere old. in that era, I bought it, and it was fucking crazy. I thought it was a really interesting experience because it was like Slipknot, but way different. And uh, I liked him singing, and it's like he finally took the mask off and a whole bunch of other stuff. And I remember how I big of a deal that was. I think that's off from that. That's why I like. I'm starting to like this a bit more. So after seeing like a, a couple music videos, right? I don't know. It's, it's like a more approachable Slipknot, more of like a almost like a rock band feel. I'd want to say is, is what attracted. But still that hard edge, so kind of like a fusion band, uh, multiple sounds. And I've like everything been in this world, attracted. like Korean fusion. Yeah, but they were, like, doing it back before it got, like, pop, right? So I got to appreciate that even in, like, their older albums, it wasn't just, like, one consistent sound on every song. They'd have a couple that were soft, a couple that were harder. And Corey Taylor can sing, like, really well. From what I understand, he can hit five separate, five and a half octaves of vocal range. So he actually can do a lot of different things. This man here with all the technological and... Well, I, I find him fast. Like, it's interesting. I like his yeah. voice. I like when I see like like when Tech Nine featured Corey Taylor a couple of years ago for that song. I was like, yeah. And it's about the only one off the album I cared about because Corey Taylor singing on a chorus is great most of the time for me. He has a lovely fucking voice. When it growls, I love it. I don't know the, the bands, the songwriting, all the rest of that. That's a whole other conversation. But he has a great fucking voice, and uh, so I always like Stone Sour because he sings more, and I appreciate that. And uh, I don't know. So what do you uh, think of the name uh, Hydrograd? I really don't know. I, I, I thought, like, I don't know. If, after looking at the uh, like the album cover and everything, I don't know if it was, like, a Nazi thing or a, a Russian thing. Kind of, like, kind of yeah. cool because I, I think of Hydra from, like, the Marvel Universe. I, I got that kind of influence from the, the cover. But apparently he was in an airport and he looked up and he saw what he thought to be Hydrograd. And when he looks back, no, that's what they're saying. He looked up and he, he saw something and he thought it said Hydrograd. And then it wasn't actually Hydrograd, but he said to himself, this is a cool name for a fucking album. Um, and then it went from there. And uh, I saw that on a couple of places and I was like, damn, that is so not deep. Any but, viewer out there who's listening, please educate us. No, if you really have a deeper meaning, but I'm pretty sure that like 
that's what happened and i i liked it because it kind of sounded superhero-y and, and it was an interesting name right yeah. like it's engaging it's not like eight by incubus or some boring ass fucking title so at least i wanted to like check <laughs> it shot. out yeah fuck that up okay so can i ask you something blue jean baby yeah what's the first song uh why why sif or something like that I... We have a, a nice little hello you bastards just start us off on this album and then a lot of instrumental for about two minutes i liked it because it kind of kind of like uh well listening to it i was and also seeing something recently during the week i i just found out that in a couple of weeks uh, netflix is going to be dropping off a uh, castlevania anime which is really okay. cool so I, after hearing that i was like i hope they take this like instrumental because it really goes well like it gives me that eerie like uh transylvania type of dracula feel I uh, I liked it as like, because it piqued my curiosity. It wasn't like over the top hard, right? It kind of was more of that it dramatic flair, right? And like that, <laughs> like kind of uh, like you know, you feel like something powerful or epic is about to happen, right? Yeah. I I tried like a half-assed effort to figure out what the the title stood for, and I don't know what it means. So please, somebody out there, if you know what the fuck it stands for, let us know below, because I'm um, I'm genuinely curious. But I, I enjoyed this. I thought it was a well-composed piece of little short introduction music. It set my expectations for the album up kind of high, right? Like, mm -hmm. okay, this is going to be like an epic musical experience, right? Pretty cool tone setting. And the drums were really freaking good. So, like, the... <laughs> very powerful. But then again, it was kind of like... It wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be. So, it was kind of like tricking you. It's like, hey... Here's a little taste of how we might play our instruments in the song in the songs <laughs> up to coming, and yeah. uh, or it's like, oh wow, am I am I about to like have to headbang or should I just play this in the middle of the street and start moshing? What's gonna happen? It was like a little uh, mystery, a little taste. I feel like this is the kind of music where if you play it in traffic, it makes it more epic. Oh God, no! I think yeah. I would get more aggressive. Like uh, I would probably want to get out of my car and punch the guy okay. that cut me off. Yeah, I give it a four. I thought it was a great start. Honestly, like it was pretty good compared to the other ones we've heard in the past. It piqued my curiosity. It's it's not really something I'm going to bump every day. No, but, uh, but no. if I was going to do like a let's play this album through again, yeah. I'm definitely not skipping it. I'm going to play it through and enjoy it. Well, I, that's where I disagree with you. Like Because now that I know it's an instrumental, so no disrespect to instrumentals, and this is something of a personal taste for myself. When I listen to instrumentals, it's more classical music and stuff like that for composers. So when I hear something like this for a rock album, I completely skip it. Oh, fair it's, enough. And that's, but I'm not going to give it a bad grade. It's very good. It is a four. Like you said, I gave it a four too. But let's be honest. A lot of times when you buy an album, you want to hear everybody in the band. Like uh, That's what we have solos for. And that's my opinion. Um, that, that's... I don't necessarily agree with your opinion, but I'm coming from a different background, right? Where I don't, I couldn't, if there's a solo or not, it doesn't change shit for me. I either like the solo or if there's no solo, I, I might not even notice it's missing. So I feel like it was just kind of like a dope instrumental that like somebody could spit rhymes over or something. It piqued my curiosity. I don't know. You want to move on to the next track? Uh, of course. So it's, it's type A personality. So, I mean, apparently the the song title is a pun for type A personality. That's why I said it so weird before. So that dominant alpha male type person and that theory. And lyrically kind of describes a bunch of aloof shit al alluding to, I guess, the negative, self-destructive, selfish personality styles around it. And like, it almost sets Corey Taylor up as a confused lost person who just feels all sorts of like teenage angst is a good way to describe the emotion i was getting out of this from from him but the music was dope like the music was pretty proper like i don't know it was a good second song compared to leaving it from an instrumental part you got like a good everything's good there his voice range was fun it, it was a little bit too soft for me though like i was expecting you know coming to a, a band like uh, stone sour I don't know. I thought I was going to get a very big surprise. And then after finding out the facts that the lead singer from Slipknot, I was expecting, you know, that kind of changed my perspective. And then when I heard this, it, it was interesting, but it wasn't great, but it wasn't bad. Like, I, I could live with it or I could live without it. I agree. Like, okay. So here's what I was feeling. Like, it's coming in, right? Like, the actual multiple parts of the songs are pretty interesting that there's multiple riffs in play. 
And then you get to this like bridge part at the end where he just gets fucking cheesy. Yeah. And like you got this strong, hard feel going through, and I'm like, I'm feeling it, I'm respecting it. And then the lame factor just spikes to like fucking ten and you're like, Oh Corey, why did you why did you choose to like he gets all singy and like echoey almost and I'm just like, What the fuck is this it doesn't fit, right? To me at least. And I kinda really heard it and I thought the the, the pun title was lame. Like yeah. I, I didn't really like I get, had he just called it type A personality and wasn't trying to be so edgy with it, I might have really appreciated it just a bit more. I cut out that lame ass part at the end, made it a bit shorter because this is like five minutes, and like the music was great. So something you've said in past podcasts, where like you respect musicians that have mad talent and do their shit right. Yeah, I don't want to put it down. That is something we are going to see on this but, album a bunch. But then the songwriting is weird. It doesn't make me want to follow and actually, it like it's just it very childish. I find very easy. Yeah, I I'm agreeing. Yeah, I gave this a three and a half on five. I gave it a little more than a three because it's not like a hundred percent boring, but like it's not good enough to earn a four. So like I'm gonna be very justified and very easy. I'm gonna give it a four. The reason being was it was a very good surprise after the first song. Okay. So it's like okay, well this is not that bad. I'm interested. Like this is first reaction. This is this grades our first reaction. That's why we do it at the end. You'll see, with the the whole grade. And but for me, it's like look. I hope I want I want to be more. like delighted by your track. I don't want to actually find parts of it I don't like. If that like there if it hadn't had that part I didn't like, it would have been a straight four. I agree, and I I bet there's people who love it out there, and that's totally fine. But for me, it just felt cheesy, and part of it is because Corey Taylor is 43 years old, and there's a certain degree of edginess I just have oh, trouble show digesting. Us that you're growing up as a person. Exactly, like there's age appropriateness. Like uh, I just want to like bring something up mighty quick before we go up to the next track, like. Chad Kroger from Nickelback called like Corey Taylor and like Stone Sour specifically like Nickelback light. Now, I don't necessarily agree with the comparison, but I do want to point out one thing. What I liked about the Nickelback album and Chad Kroger's songwriting is it was clearly like a 40 something year old dude writing mature shit appropriate to his life. Stuff I could listen to and relate to, but also appreciate he's older than me and etc. I feel like I'm 10 years older than the lyrics Corey Taylor's writing and I'm 29 and it's just fucking weird to have that from a guy who's that much older than me. And for me, that's something I take into consideration with the music being written. Like I feel like Slipknot was more mature than this song. Anyway, so three and a half. Um, yeah, I guess uh, you have any more comments on this one? I'm just, you know, from a perspective, let's hopefully everything starts to get more interesting. All right, so let's see what Knievel has landed is like. All right, Jay, I want this whole podcast to just be me talking for ages. So how did you feel about this one? For once. Uh, <laughs> ding. So the song, pretty interesting. Like, I like how it uh, kind of reminded me a bit of Slipknot, kind of like a deep, uh, rocky voice, like, you know, heavy metal. Yes. And then I was like, ooh, this finally, like, I'm like, I'm jamming in my car to this. I'm driving. I'm like, I'm actually happy. I'm liking it. It's fun. It's energetic. It's going. It's free flowing. The solo was great. I liked it. It reminded me back, like, in the 90s and, uh, like, even, like, kind of like a slash type of solo with, like, a lot of electricness, like, really good flowing. Okay. And then, um, I like the tempo of the song. What I mean by that is, like, when he starts singing in that deep, deep voice of rock, like that heavy metal type of style, and then he goes into like the, you know, right, right, right. coolness. It kind of remind me of what's it called? Who's that band? Fuck. Uh, I, I never know when you go. Who's that band? <sighs> they they sing my curse at the, as a tribute to them. Okay. I have to remember them. I forget, but it's a really good band. <laughs> right. No, I was just say I was very surprised. Like it finally did well. Like it, it wasn't uh, the first two songs were just fine. I'm like very interested in the song. It was very good. I gave Sick. it a four point five. Holy shit! Like I actually liked it. I was like, this is good. This is something okay. I was, I'll plus this one. So I had a very different feeling. And okay, full full disclosure. I remember the band. Okay, what is it? Kill Switch Engage. Okay, I see where you're coming from. I like Kill before Switch. his voice went to the gone. But um, so I had a different feeling on this one. First of all, I thought it was kind of generic. All right. What I mean is like, yeah, everything felt right. But what I'm noticing so far on this album is nothing's great. It's a lot of like what it's supposed to be, 
more than like mm-hmm. anything innovative. Nothing like really hooks me. Like in six months, I'll be shocked if you remember the name of this song if I play it for you. That's how little. Distinction. I'll remember the song, but I don't know the name. Like I even exactly. don't know the name like, right now. Like I know something like Knievel, Knievel has, has landed. landed. But then I, I'm a lyrics person because I love rap. I make rap, so all of this to me is like, okay, the lyrics matter. And he has this line in the chorus like, "Why am I so ostracized?" And I'm like, "Dude, you're so ostracized because like if you listen to these two tracks, at least the last one and this one, you sound like a mid forties dysfunctional brat who wants to live hedonistically and not grow up." And I just wanted to like say like it's not to your credit here. And I had a bit of an issue with this because again, I'm all about that age appropriate shit. You just can't be a 45 year old whining like this, in my opinion. Like it's just pandering at that point. You're trying to create some shit that you know 15, 16 year olds. You know, I liked their last album when I was 18, 19, and I actually uh, checked it out a bit, and it was kind of similar. But it was like all that time ago. And it, like, look, if you're in your 20s, early 30s, and shit's fucked up, okay. I'm in my late 20s, shit's still kind of fucked up. I get that. But like by 45, when you look at the difference between the dudes writing mature shit and the dudes writing that like pandering whiny shit, like I just, I had a lot of trouble with this track. It's not that the mu- the music was its saving grace. And you're right, the structuring was actually pretty good. Yeah. But just the lyrics killed it for me. Well, this just... is something I have to say about lyrics and rock songs. Like I feel like it's more the instrument than the lyrics. Yeah, the singer has to have a good voice. It's more of just following the... the uh, the music and going with it. I don't know. That's just my feeling. See, like I would, I would argue that the difference between the level of success a band that Nick, like Nickelback has obtained versus Stone Sour, where, where as you even got the name backwards when we introduced it, right? Yeah. So like, if you look at it, it has to do with the honesty behind the lyrics well, and the realness I've of the songs. I've never heard from them. If I knew from them, I wouldn't be calling Nickelback back Nickel. No, no, no. I get that, but the fact that you heard of them shows the tier they've managed to get to versus us, a Stone Sour, and I think that. Stuff like lyrical maturity plays into your ability to create tenure over time. Well, hold on. There's also one thing I think a lot of people forget. Like, this band could be super popular if this music was accepted by everyone. We still have a generation but that haven't grown up with this type of music, you know so what, they're man? not accepted. This is not going to be on the radio, I, I would even say, on Shom. I would say that, like, it's it's almost like their fan base would have outgrown them in a lot of cases. Most well, of us stopped listening because we grew up. And now they're just going after another generation of younger people. Well, another thing for me is like not knowing this band too much is like how long do the albums come out? Like, are they every four years? Are they every two years? Are they every uh, year? Every couple of years. So that maybe that's a reason too. M- maybe, but in another case, that wouldn't hurt a band. Sometimes that, it would. This, this this far into your career, right? Mm-hmm. And yeah, sure, you split between Slipknot and stuff. But my issue is just with the songwriting and the lyrics, which but is all But imagine that. Crying. It's like this music is, let's say he loves it. Like Slipknot is his uh, main, let's say his sure his like, main focus. no it wasn't his main focus like this think, was his first band I think, yeah this was his like and, real heart project and this is his heart project but slipknot's more of the you know group you know why slipknot does well because they're the heavy metal of kiss well yeah i guess but i think that again this isn't about whether or not everyone else likes it i'm just describing what grinds my gears about no that's this particular fine, right. track right i don't like the 45 year olds writing emo shit like that mostly because i grew up and it makes it hard for me to appreciate it i'm okay with the nostalgic when i go back to that place in my head but like i have nothing to gain from this song there are so many better versions musically of this with better lyrics better anthems to write but unfortunately we're not doing them nope we're doing this this. so i'm just sharing my opinion to the folks so what you give them this was a three okay this was just bland it was just another track on this album that would be fun live it would be fun to see the show but like i'm not gonna remember this over time this but is not gonna stick with me do you when you grade do you grade you i don't know how you grade but i just have a question for you at the time it's like when i grade i take influence of the songs before do you just grade every song equally i try to be like objective to uh, as okay. possible with each track and and album placement does matter so i think it's well placed for the sound i guess yeah because i felt like all the songs before were very like safe there's only two so far that's what i mean but like i'm saying really i don't to me the previous tracks didn't really influence this one this one it was just kind of i think it was a nice surprise because after having an instrumental then whatever song and then bang but like the music wasn't good enough alone to get past what it bothered me about it anyway but we've got on this for a bit now let's talk about hydrograd So, I'm not gonna lie. I don't have. I, I feel like my comments on the previous song almost parallel over to Hydrograd. 
it's another song about the dude's insecurities and fucked upness, but not done in an interesting way. Just done in that kind of pandering edginess, like, ah, kind of way. Sure, it might work, it might sell, but it's kind of a little bit boring to me. Mm. Musically, it was cool. There was a lot of, like, great construction and, and songness to it, but I felt like it was another kind of bland single. It's kind of like fucking felt like cookie cutter like track. Like, for a while. like, Knievel has landed, had more personality than this song, in my opinion, but this song was just... Eh. Like, again, like, the rest of the band is doing really, really well yeah. to keep me interested. But Corey, lyrically, is bothering me, even though his delivery is okay. It's not like... It, his it's range, bad. his musical voice is great. It's just... <sighs> uh, lyrics, if you're not getting interested in the lyrics, if the song is not catching you by the chorus or the the bridge or anything, I don't know what else well, to say. I, I know that say. a lot of people can just tone out and vibe to the music, and I've been told by many people, like even yourself, the lyrics aren't as important, but I can't get past it. No, but then, hold on, lyrics are not important, but if you're starting to have like a CD with full of just like, if the songs are four minutes and you only have 45 seconds... No, or... no, no, he had like, there was there was more to it, like we just popped off a couple seconds listening before. No, it's but we listened that... to a good minute of this song before, and I was and just like... And had a long intro, so... and it was, it was and nice. And the song's only four minutes and 37 seconds, man. Oh, only this shit's long. The whole album's got a lot of songs. I gotta give them credit. They're mm. musically but like, well-rounded songs. Like, look, it, the issue isn't the songwriting, the structuring, the instrument playing, or anything like that. It's the lyrics. It's pissing me off. Otherwise, I'm okay with the track, but for that, it was so, three. Another three for me. When I started listening to it, like, I started laughing to myself because I'm like, I was just, because, like, I got back into wrestling, as people know. I started watching it all over, and when I heard this, I'm like, I'm picturing like un the Undertaker coming out to as the American badass, where he came okay. in with a motorcycle and everything. I could see it perfectly coming in and give a big boot and a fucking last ride and perfect like biker music, right. or like this could be on fucking Sons of Anar uh, Sons of Anarchy. Anyways, it's fun. It's uh, it's okay. It's um, it's just what the fuck's going on with this album so far? It's just like it's, we're four songs in. And it's just like holy crap. Mm, I it's saw like, a it's, comment that they were trying to be groovier and a little. This more This is not fun. groovy. This is not the, the, He was trying to not be so much of their previous work. Well, no, I'm sorry. If you have something that works, works with it. Just Im evolve well, with what works. I don't want to shit like on they experimenting. Have, I'm, I'm shitting it on it. I don't care. I just think it didn't work out as well in this case. Well, I, look, I'm just saying on the song. And also, a big thing is when you name a CD Hydrograd, and then this is your, your fucking album song. Or, you know, yeah, there you go. Thank you for saving my English there. Uh, why? And the fuck is this so fucking boring? I don't know. Uh, you you know it? what? I can't. I don't want to even give it a mark. I want to give it a question it a mark. mark. Okay, one. Okay, perfect. Song number three is next on the list. I'd rather talk about that. Let me cross this line and show you where it leads. Song three, three, three. Which is actually the fifth song. Fucking stone sour. <laughs> um, I like this one though. It was it's fun. It was more rock, less metal, less hard, more fun. Actually, uh, to add a bit to that, it sounded more retroy. Yeah, and but... that's what goes with the uh, what what the, what? Come on, I say, don't know. I'm waiting it. for you to finish your, uh, your my little thing there. Yeah. Little, the video. Oh yeah, the video. Yeah, I, I could. The video they were dressed up in whatever you describe it. I wasn't a big fan. They look like power glam rock. Like they look like a uh, icky breaky heart with his mullet. Yeah, but um. So, I don't know. It wasn't that interesting. They were kind of like making fun of the last era, parodying it a bit. Yeah. Well, whatever. Corey Taylor looks weird now. I haven't seen him in a decade, so it's weird to see him now. Old nine guys all with that weird haircut. Anyway. No, but he has a normal haircut. He put on a wig. Yeah, no. I mean, time with his normal haircut. It's just weird to see him like that. With that, like, new age haircut? Yeah. It's like, I no. Prefer, like, I remember his hair was, like, long and but shit. Like, at least he's not known for his haircut, like Trav Kruger. And right. then he gets his haircut. It's like, what the fuck is this? Anyway, so uh, this song was pretty interesting lyrically. It was like the first one that actually had some meat to it, you know, just describing like love and the emotions behind it and the passion and that kind of like the experience of it. And I felt like it was a really cool depiction of it, although singly, it was delivered in a very single cookie cutter kind of way, but it wasn't bad. It hit me in the right kind of way. It is the kind of song that. I would catch myself singing along to in a couple of months. Got that earworm, get stuck in your head, kind of pop chorus feel. And uh, I don't hate it at all. Uh, well composed. He he really hits this shit properly. It's just kind of light and fluffy. So four on five because it's well made. Doesn't annoy me at all. But it also doesn't mesmerize me. There's nothing here to like. be like, this is the shit. It's just a fun, fluffy single that 
came out and had a video and I guess whatever clearly pushed by the label or something in my opinion okay well with Mr. Negativity over here I liked the song I enjoyed it because it was fun the video was great it was it was a good song it was fluffy like you said it was fucking fluffy but sometimes yeah. you need that and you know what that was what the CDs was missing in the beginning it was missing that fun aroma I don't like it. It was like a fucking walking in. Like, it wasn't Sunshines and Daisies, but it was, it was fucking. Sappy, though. Yeah, right? but it's sometimes you need a good sap song. And then, you know what? It was fun. But it's like perfectly nodding your head look, music. It, it's just that when your sap song that, like, is so much like it sounds like everyone else's version of this same song, it's hard for me to call works. that perfection. No, I'm not saying. Okay, hold on. No one said perfection here. Well, I'm not saying. You give okay. it a four. You said I was negative. I never gave it a four. No, I give it a four. You said I was negative. Yeah, but I, mean, I could hear in your voice like you didn't like want to give it a four. Am it's I close. wrong there? <laughs> it was close. I felt like you wanted to give it a three. No, no, no. No, it's definitely not that. It, like I said, I, I could listen to this. I could enjoy this. Like, But this is not a plus, but it's, it's a just, good song. It could be any band. It doesn't have to be Stone Sour singing this. No, you're okay. Well, yeah, you're right. Um, but anyways, I gave it a uh, 4.5. Because I enjoyed it. It was fun. It was good. It's like I'm like. Uh, okay. Like I'm doing the robot. Why not? So you know? like All right. Okay. <laughs> it's got, okay, right. Those are my it's, dance it's moves because I'm a like, big guy. It's got that poppy fucking feel to it. And I suppose what attracts you to it kind of like kept it a little it's bit the, away from You know the what? That, what? It's the, uh, the sellout. That was a sellout song. Absolutely. Yeah. I didn't want to say that, but. It feel. was okay, though. Sometimes you need those songs, you know? Like, it, at least he's not going Justin Bieber. So you know what? It, it does capture you. It makes you want to listen to the album for me. No, it, it doesn't make me want to listen to the album. Well, it makes me want to listen to that single. Okay. I just, it kind of feels weird to me. It's right. just like you didn't have to write this. Can I just say one thing, man? What? Between me and you? What? You're looking fabulous. Oh, thanks, buddy. Um, I like this one more. It was released at the exact same time as song number three, and they both had videos. This is the one with the concert playing, and then the incredibly wacky inflatable arms mans are in the crowd, and then wavy, they, wavy. I oh, fuck it. I don't care. They take over the stage, and then all of a sudden they're in the crowd. But I like it because they kind of have like that like uh, rock vibe to it still. Thank God. It was it just the chorus was clearly like like you can tell when they're aiming for a track to be a single. Like it almost the two choruses like synced up a bit, but I like this one. It had a little more energy, a little more soul. Lyrically, it's apparently, and I say apparently because I can't figure out how the fuck this song is about this. It's about how, like, social media celebrities are ruining the integrity of art, according to Corey Taylor. Oh, yeah, I could see that because there's a lot of social media guys now, like, from YouTube. Like, we're on YouTube, right? But it's like a lot of these guys are coming out with these skits and trying to become movie stars and stuff. And But, like, you know what? There's an art form of, there's an art and a respect of everything you, you know, do. I it's like the guys on YouTube that think they're funny. They're not really comedians. Well, here's the thing. I appreciate the sentiment. I don't understand how the lyrics are actually about oh, that. Oh, I can understand that. that. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay. Yeah, well, I'm... the lyrics are not clear. You can see that like something's going on with this guy. It's like I feel like he just, it's like, okay, uh, it's been a couple of years, guys. Let's make a CD. The thing is, it's like it's obscure, angsty style. Like It's like, look... Do you remember like when emo was all over back in the day, right? And like just that Atreus and Bullet, and their their like lyrics were obscure, right? They just all kind of sounded like aloof, vague poetry that could mean a whole lot of shit. And I feel like the lack of directness in some of these tracks, like there's almost no way to really know what the song's about. It's just like he he got like fucked up and wrote a bunch of shit down. Well, I had a better example. I feel like these songs were made years ago when he was younger, and he's just mm. singing with them now. That's a good possibility. Maybe the well isn't so great now. I don't, oh, I don't maybe know. Maybe he's just like, okay, I got a bunch of songs. Why don't we just release these now? No, I think he wrote this album. I'm going to be honest. I think that they actually put this together. I, I just, think they did too. I but think I feel his like like these... songwriting game is, is still like so... It's just, it's just it hasn't evolved much is what I'm seeing lyrically. Like It's very comparable to the type of shit that was on that album. Not everyone like can give you a master ago. of puppets or answer a sign man. You know? Enter you know, sign man. And, but what I do expect is that your lyrics no, kind of right. make a little bit of sense and isn't just vague nothingness because then it's just filler, right? Then you're just saying... Well, that's saying what this album is. I don't want to go that far. I'm saying it. Like, I, so I far, this, this a, album a, is... A three and a half on five. I felt like it was a little cookie cutter cliche. Less that I would want to bump this. Song number three had that really pop addictiveness to it. This one was a, a little, little bit more, more edgy. 
but it kind of turned me off a little bit more. And like I could see how in the right mood I'm bumping this, but on a regular day less so. Oh, plus it, it'll be there, but like I might skip it a couple of times to get to something else. Right. Uh, I give it a three. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's just it's not the most spectacular song considering its name. So the next one, it's uh, it's uh, the Witness Tree. Uh, with the witness tree, I I'm just getting to the point where I sometimes with CDs they want to get pumped up. This CD is putting me to sleep. You know what? We ha- we haven't mentioned this thing in a while on this podcast because we've been blessed and we've had we've had some luck with these albums. But I want to bring back the blender effect. This sort of songs all kind of start sounding a oh, bit the same. That, yeah. the, the they're about the same thing. <laughs> Frankly, they become a little indistinguishable from a reviewing perspective. Not to say that they're bad songs, but they become non-distinct like what does this song seem to be about confusion more like a little less whiny a little more confessional but the same type of like he has no idea how to get his shit together and you know i guess he's more aware he's trying to come to terms with it's like come on man like this has more or less been the crux of the album on the exception of song number three yeah so at this point i'm like okay i'm a little bored with it the music's good and I like that it's changed and it's now a little slower and more melodic and, and showing a different side of what the band can do. That part's okay. That part is interesting. And again, no disrespect to the, the, the music. But I'm bored with it. Like you were saying, putting me to sleep. Because to be a good album, you, you genuinely need to, to flip it up in positive and interesting ways. It can't just be like, I know how to write a song about being depressed and confused. 15 of those, boom, album. That's just boring. That's not showing that you're better than Chad Kroger, Corey. That's all I'm trying to say. Well, uh, well the only reason we're bringing up the Nickelback stuff is because we just recently reviewed them. And because uh, I thought it was funny that Chad Kroger called the Stone Sour uh, Nickelback Light like last week. I'll link oh, to yeah, that article so that you can read it. I thought it was funny because Chad sounds like such a fucking asshole. But like listening to well, this I'm album sure he is. from a songwriting point of view... I don't necessarily think the styles are the same, but yo, Corey's the weaker songwriter is what I'm discovering. Oh fuck yeah! So like so far, like you said with that blender effect, like what I mean from that, what I pers- like how I use that and how I see it is like you get three songs that sound the same, then you change it up, and you're like, oh, finally back into a new different type of song. Then the next three songs are the same, and then you get a new sound again, and the next three songs are the song. And I'm at this point, I'm just like, I I, I know like you know I want to say more on the songs, but like I I don't. I don't have the passion after at this point to look into depth in these lyrics. Am I wrong for that? Yes. I know I am. You know what, you know what dude? I don't agree. I would say Corey didn't give us a huge reason to want to dig in. Like, look. I don't want to blame him because maybe to him this is his masterpiece. Imagine to him yeah, this is his masterpiece. You know? As his, like, listener person, I can flat out say you're not interesting enough for me to take that extra time with the vast amount of music, with the competition in the music scene that it is today. Oh, here's a a guy of like the magnitude of Stone Sour for like, they had that banger album. I know they can achieve that bangerness, but it just felt like lackluster. And that's what I'm feeling. Like the effort level here wasn't great. It was almost like they were trying to make an album, not make their next great album. That that's what I'm feeling up into this. Point. If anyone knows anything about movies, every if you ever heard of the Razzies, okay, this is the Razzie Award. Right okay, I understand albums. what you're saying. I'm right. really like after reviewing so many albums so far with you, like this one is just like dreadful so far. It, it's not the best example. It's unfortunate. I had high expectations, and I'm a little disappointed. Well, I, uh, let's to our viewers. Uh, oh, would, so hold on. What'd what you give it? I gave this one a very boring three. Uh, I just want to give out a little thing. We said we were going to do a Coldplay review on a lot of the al- uh, reviews before, saying, like, you know, I won. I was all happy. Yeah. The reason why we didn't is because it was an EP. It wasn't released And it yet. got pushed till July. Yeah. So, so it's not even out yet. So We're we, actually not going to do the EP. We're going to wait for the album. And so uh, We're going to figure that out at a later point. Maybe we'll do a mini special to make Jay happy. Um, on that, yeah, shh, that could happen. Yeah, uh, winning. And... Uh, Let's uh, if you guys want to see us do a mini one on the Coldplay EP, just put it in the comments below, and, and we'll see what we can do to make that happen. No, you'll get me happier, and I'll be yeah. like wanting to shake my boobs maybe on but the screen. That's then, and in the meantime, we in the Stone Sour Land. So this speaking so of shaking stuff up, I guess uh, it's a uh, rose red, violet, violet blue. blue. This song is dumb, and so am I. Okay, 
I, I want to start this one off. No. I talked a lot of shit this whole album about yeah, everything. Does. Me too. Because, well, it deserved it, in my opinion. Still does. This song, my only beef with this song is the stupid-ass fucking awful title. I hate the title. The title is awful. I wanted to hate this song so much. I thought he was handing me a free one to hate. And then it started playing. You mean and the I album? Was, no, like this, this track, <laughs> right? And then it started playing, and it was like, whoa, it's really good. And it starts getting into it, and I'm like, this is really fucking good. And the subject matter, it's like Corey Taylor coming to terms with the fact that his shit is lame. And I'm like, me and well, Corey I just are made, agreeing here. I just made a comment before when we were talking that maybe he just doesn't feel challenged anymore. Maybe he's just like, I'm making music to make music, and it's but, not even making music to be good. Maybe he's just like, hey, why not drop this CD? Maybe I really personally, like how I feel right now about these songs are these songs were made when he was younger, and he's just singing them now. Maybe. I, I still think he tried to write them because there's a certain degree of dysfunction that's consistent on it, like too consistent. But here it's like this awareness that his shit isn't cool anymore. And it's honest. It almost feels more honest and more relevant to who he is than the previous tracks on the album, which just showed the chaos without like the understanding behind it. And I like that side of it. I like the fact that it went from like that kind of dope ass alternate feeling of the verses to that intense chorus back to the alternate into the fun solo shit. And it just it just hit so right. I wanted to hate it so much, dude, but I gave it a five and I plus oh, it on Spotify. Christ. And I was oh. like, I could listen to the fuck out of this song. It's so good. This is what I wanted out of this album. Fun, great, awesome tracks that I could feel and like enjoy. And finally eighth song of the album we got to one i'm really feeling thank you thank you so much stone sour <laughs> and you give it a four it was good was maybe not i'm jizzing on it like him <laughs> i am not like a fanboy out like that much uh it was okay it wasn't great it wasn't bad it was good it's a four it's uh, better than everything else um i like the slowness i like the heaviness i like the fastness i like everything tempo was good his uh, vocal range was good I'm giving those generic answers because there's not much more to say. Like he said, the lyrics are not good. There's nothing no, that this makes... one I like the lyrics. Oh, but like I'm saying overall, like maybe I didn't love it like you. Okay, that's fair. But like I'm not gonna hate on it. Is it a plus? Fine, I'll give it a plus. But like I said, it's like this whole CD is skippable. All right. Like I... it, this is one of those CDs you like you have, and it's like imagine like you have like the soundtrack to like uh, the B movie. Okay, like I happen to think this song doesn't fit that description, but otherwise I'm agreeing with you so far. So in about like, you know, seven more songs, I bet you're going to be saying, thank God it's over. Hello. Hi. Um, this album's not over, but this song goes right back into kind of like the genericness Blender. feeling. I, I don't know, man. If you guys are super duper Stone Sour fans and like we're shitting on this album completely, we're sorry. Just keep in mind that like it's not as good as you might think it is. I understand that its particular like sound fits really well for what it is, but this shit's not spectacular. It's formulaic. The lyrics are immature again. Well, you don't kind of like disappoint me. I just realized this too. It's like after looking at the album artwork. It's like I kind of hoped it was like kind of like a Ramstein's feel to the song because I saw that album. I was like, oh, and so far it's so so bad. It, they're like, it's like they're trying to be like heavy kit. Like they're kind of like Kiss where they're trying to be so energetic, but it's so blah. Well, the and then it's is, like it's not heavy like a, a heavy rocker band. It's like I'm like I'm surprised this is the lead singer of Slipknot. I'm like, it's what just the fuck that is it's this? so emo. It's so emo, emo in like that negative sense. But there's no even like emo. But at least emos had emotion. Well, this that, doesn't no, have emotion. This has emotion. It's just all sorts of dark and melodramatic ones. Like I don't. This even, one, I don't feel that. I don't get that from the feeling. Like well, the, I, don't, I don't think that the feel of the songs matches the lyrics very yeah. well. But this one is like, everyone's guilty, everyone's a fucking asshole, because he's a fucking... It's like, I get the feeling that he's going through some shit, like, some bad things have happened to him in his life, and this is like his therapy. Like, Three inches just, of his cock fell off, and he's just like wondering what's yeah, going on in my life. Something like that, like, something's going wrong, like, maybe people don't like him, maybe he doesn't have a lot of friends, I don't, I don't really know. I just do know that listening to this album is giving me this melancholy bored feeling mm. with the like this one to me is another three and a half the music's good i could listen to this instrumental but Corey is adding this negative element that's making me not enjoy the song quite as much so three and a half on five uh, fuck i wish there was a pass uh three yeah all right it's um, just bland it's like it's not fun there's no emotion to it it's 
really, let's go, let's do something, man. Come on. Yeah. Like, if, uh, like, I would pull him. If he was a goalie or something, I'd pull him out of the game. All right, well, maybe their uh, Hail Mary play comes in the next track, St. Marie. Back. I started watching The Ranch, so I'm really digging this song because it's got that countryish vibe. I really enjoyed it. Like, yeah. to me, like, it has, like, it's like a pure country song. Like, I don't know what anyone wants to tell me differently. It's, it's so mellow, so relaxing. It actually was good. I can't even complain about it. It was a nice little timbit of a surprise. It makes me want to drink my Tim Hortons coffee and wear a cowboy hat and go to the Stampede. It makes me feel pretty cool, too. I don't really think country is my favorite genre of music in general. It's kind of slowish and not my favorite. But this song was like a refreshing oasis in the middle of this album of bland. It was just so different, so left field, but yeah. well delivered that I, I took it a lot better. Like the last track actually had some piano loops in it that made it kind of sound like a Timbaland effect to like get it stuck in your head. This one had this like organic, like fucking natural sound to it. And lyrically, it's all about like this quest for redemption. Almost like he, he's aware he's fucked up a whole bunch. And he's like kind of flipped some shit in his life. And like, you know, like it just sounds like desperate and honest. Like maybe they should have made a country album because it would have resonated more, yeah. a lot fucking better. And they did it nicer. But it was a four. And there was one criticism I really did have with this track. That they didn't play it more. So somewhere about the three and a half minute marker, it just starts to feel like it's stretching. And he does some stuff with the effects to try to add to it, but it kind of sounds a little irritating. And by like the end of the song, I'm like, fuck it, okay, done. Like this is one of those songs where I get about two thirds of the way through and then get bored and hit skip. Yeah. So it's really like, it's well made to a point and I give it a four. It's just not my favorite. I enjoyed it a lot. I had fun with it. It was good. Can't complain. I love the country feel of it. I gave it a 4.5 because I like country music. Fair enough. That's it. Have mercy. I, I can try. I can try. Yo, YouTube. Got a question. Some of you have looked into the lyrics more than I have because I was bored and lazy on this one. Um, what was the religious connotations that he was trying to allude to? If somebody could please explain that. It would be mad dope for both us and anyone else who hates our explanation of this track. Otherwise, you know, I kind of felt like he was lost in youthful indulgences and trying to figure shit out again. This is like a high school CD, like of him just trying to come out and like he's about to be 25 years old and they're 22 and he's like, what am I going to do? You know, high school is like a decade before that. I'm saying like uh, it's one of those like an adolescent thing. I'm sorry for the Fair enough. Like he's 18, 19 going out of high school. And he's like, I'm going about to go start siege up. I'm scared. He has just people that start. Yeah, wait, hold on. Maybe he graduated adult Maybe. and he got his high school. And CHF is our college in Quebec. Thank you. Um, Mercy. Yeah, Mercy, I like this song. I actually thought that, like, as a song, it was well composed, well structured. It was three and a half minutes, so it was, like, a little more in the conventional single length of all that normal shit that you would come to expect from more of a pop banger. Yeah. And I kind of felt a bit like that, but it was nice. It wasn't poorly done. I was a little confused on what the song was about. That made it harder for me to empathize with it. I love the sounds of it, and I could see myself bumping this one again and again because it actually does feel nice. It was very comparable to, like, the nice feeling of song number three where, like, you know, you can get into it. You can just easy breezy go through it. Easy I like to call this girl. my copy-paste work playlist type stuff. So when I get really boring copy-paste tasks that take me hours and I need light, airy music so I don't hate it when I'm done, like, because, you know, if you work while listening to your favorite song, when your favorite song comes on, you think of work. So I want to listen to my favorite songs at work. I want to bump some lesser favorite songs like Mercy by So and Sour. This is the kind of song I'll put on there. Light, oh. airy, lets me get through it. Don't care much about it, but sounds nice. Wow. Nice explanation there, buddy. Thank you, buddy. Uh, it, was, uh, it was a painful song for me. For real? It was okay, but it wasn't good. It wasn't great. It wasn't bad. It was just fine. Uh, I, I had a lot of more hope for this one because of the title, Mercy. I, I don't know why. When I see Mercy, I'm, I'm hoping for a banger. It wasn't a banger. I don't know why. Lamborghini Mercy. <laughs> That's exactly why. Uh, but uh, it was kind of bland. I felt like, it's like you know, one thing I can always say, like I can always be, the instruments are great. Yes. Thank you for the instruments. I appreciate that with my large-ass self. 
you know, I really like those drums. I really like those beats, but like, I want to give you more. I don't want to give you the same generic answer every single time. And that's what's like the CD is giving me hard. It's hard to work with this one. Um, tempo was okay. Uh, his voice was okay. Uh, he's like that kid that, you know, can do better, but he's only getting fifties or sixties. And this is like, what the fuck, Jimmy? Let's go. Yeah. yeah. I gave it a four. Fuck off with your fours. I liked it. I gave it a 2.5. Ooh, that's your lowest. You no, think? listen, I gave it a one before. Oh, you're right. Second lowest. I don't know. I like it a lot more than that. I think I could bump this. Yeah, the next one is Whiplash Pants. Whiplash Pants! For when those accidents happen. No, for real though, 12 tracks into this album, and I finally felt some fucking life. Like, proper life and energy. The song started off, and I was so scared, and then it just kicked in after about a few seconds. High energy, more of a slipknot kind of vocals, fucking poppy kind of chorus like they've been doing the whole way through. Cheesy lyrics, cheesy again, but I'm okay with that one on this one. It's more explosive, it's more banging, it's more fun, it's more energy. Uh, I like but it. But the lyrics are shitty like usual. Uh, it's fun. Uh, it's just like, why does it take you 12 songs to fucking release something good? I don't know, for real, I could see how maybe other people might like other stuff. This one was like almost more in tune with my new metal fucking craving this this feeling of like energy and it fed me right and it's just it doesn't get boring and the, the chorus is some weird effects on it which at first i, I was scared about but it ended up delivering really well i find and the str it never it never died there was no lame fucking moves in it if it hadn't been for the cheesiness of Corey taylor's songwriting i would have given this a perfect five for me just missed the mark lyrically otherwise it's a fucking banger i could mosh to this i could vibe to this i could aggress to this i could find joy in this song so this was a four and a half thank god you didn't give me the answer it was a three for me dude you gotta build up some anticipation and shit there's no but that's how i feel about the cd there's no anticipation nah this this song changed it for me as of like almost like at this point i was like whoa this is what i wanted when I like pictured Stone Sour, I I, I kind of had like a vision a bit more of something like this more often on the album. Great energy, fucking high diversity and shit. I'm less of like the cookie cutter safe shit that I felt like they were playing with earlier on the album. This kind of felt like it was supposed to be here the whole way through. And had it been more of this, I would have bumped this shit. Um, that's pretty interesting there. Can I ask you something? What? What are you doing next Friday night? I, I don't know, you you want to go LARP? We can do like a Friday night thing. I really like this song. <laughs> nah, this is good, man. This is what I like out of music. He has so he has such a good range in his vocals. It's so sad that the song's gonna have more impact. I don't agree, man. I think this one was fucking proper. I think you had a point to it. It's kind of like, again, like, we're so far into the album with all that crap before it, and now all of a sudden I'm getting bangers that I'm fucking loving. The energy on this song is next level. He he flips up his riffs in ways that could have failed in an experimental point of view, but it hit perfectly for me. And I guess this song's more of an anthem for the misfits and how, you know, whatever. I hate the title. The title's a stupid pun. Friday Nights. But uh, I love the feel of this track. One of the things that I thought was cute is, yeah, it was cute. And I didn't hate it. Because he says, like, villains in one of the lines. And then he has, like, this chuckle that comes after it. <laughs> yeah. And it's just like, fuck off, Corey. It was, it was like a cute moment. If you have your friend you. Corey, you just tell him to fuck off. A little bit, yeah. Mm -hmm. But, like... I, I don't know, man. I was like, where the fuck was this? The whole rest of the album. The energy was there. The composure was there. The lyrics were even there. I don't... Another four and a half on five. It's not a perfect five. Like, there's a couple, like, shits where, like, you know, it's still got a bit of cheese to it. It's not, like, a legendary banger that you're gonna want to put on when you're thinking for, like, rock anthems or whatever in your life. Hell, I'd listen to Through Glass before anything else on this song, album, any day of the week if I really... Had a craving for Stone Sour. But. I don't think people say that too much. This is a fucking dope track. And again, had more of the album sounded like this, I would have been really feeling it. And I don't know. It kind of gave me hope for the end of the album. Like, wow. what I was like, what am I going to give this grade? Wow, how shit is this album going to get rid Oh! Some stuff to save it, it man. man. Stuff to lift it right the back. Fuck yeah, up. Yeah, but out of fifteen songs, maybe five songs, four songs saved yeah, it. Yeah, you're right. But so like my grade. But that's where we are now, man. 
I'm saying that this part of the album is dope so far. I'm really it's, fucking feeling it. It's better. Is it dope? dope? Yes. I don't know. It's better. I mean, this is right up in my cup of tea of music. Oh, what I want out of like rock metal-y type shit. I smack your hand and make you drop your teacup. You're speaking like, I can't even pronounce the word. Blasphemy? Fuck, I can't Blasphemy. Blasphemy. No, I'm not, man. This is, but this is what I want out of it. I mean, it's fucking new metal. It's Slipknot. It's, but it's not sour. bad. It's not good. It's a three. It's a pass. Fuck you, Jimmy, for passing again. No, nah, I mean, it's Do not. Do better. I, to be fair, there's very little that's failed. There's been very few misses on this album. Oh. My problem has been distinction. If you're, if you're making it, first off, if you're making a CD just to pass by, like, that's how I feel about the CD. I don't think he tried to fucking just pass. I think that it was an, I think he just failed to hit the mark most of the way through. But He's this, shooting blanks, bro. Yes, but I feel that at the end of this album, the personality and the feel, the flow, like the, there's a synergy in these last couple of tracks that really make it stand out and make it feel like, yeah, this is Stone Sour that we're listening to that I didn't feel in a lot of the other ones where it was, yeah, this could be any band that we're listening to. So I fucking appreciated this one a lot more. Um, It was okay with the music, like usual. I'm, I'm just fucking generalizing it again. Uh, I didn't. I didn't enjoy it. It wasn't fun for me. I don't know. Like I'm really dreading this few songs now. Like it's just like that blender effect has stopped finally. Yes. And we got a new thing, and I'm just hoping, like you know, it's not a four, it's not a two, it's a three point five because now I have hope, I guess. Right. But let's see where it's gonna go before I start praising them. Like okay. I, I don't know if it's too late to praise the CD. Well, you're right. But you know, I I think we could talk about the album after in a bit. There's two more songs. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, somebody stole my eyes. Hey, man. Yo. Did you find my eyes? Somebody stole them. Yeah, okay. The pun comes before. Yeah. I know, but I want to be stupid. All right. I, I like this one, dude. This is it fucking was a fun. I'm like... hooked now. This is, this, is, this is so good. The energy level is right there. The aggression. This is like a fucking anthem. Like, although lyrically corny and cheesy again there are some flaws here like he compares himself to han solo hey what's whoa, 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 what's wrong with that him comparing himself Why to not? Han solo? Why don't be he's right. i feel <laughs> he's not fucking what's that i don't know me? i feel like me and cory disagree a bit on how he sees himself and how i i see him well cory has to see maybe, himself completely different maybe than that's the point of the song a little bit that he sees himself through like bad um perceptions but I, I don't know. I, I got confused. Well, Han Solo was very like if you go into that, he was very selfish and self absorbed. Okay. Okay. Then he becomes a better person. Okay. I, all right. I didn't know that. You're, now, so, wait a minute. I'm not a huge Star Wars person. Did you watch Star Wars? Well, yeah, but a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. That's very funny. Thank you. But you should watch it again. Cause I you... I've tried and I got bored in a new hope. Oh, go fuck yourself. I didn't finish it. You're you're not. I'm a trekkie, bro. I'm a trekkie. <laughs> Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Either way, the energy on this shit's next level. Um, I felt like I felt like it was a treat. Like these last three songs Our completely bonus. like changed my perception of expectations in the way you were describing. Now I'm excited. Now I'm like, fuck yeah. This is like that metal ish kind of feel where now I wanna be in the middle of a mosh pit freaking but... the fuck out with this. I'll even sing along to this motherfucker because it was fun. Like go on. Here's my little comment. You said something really cool and good. But now, look at the CD. Mm -hmm. You see the CD. Mm -hmm. Now you have one song left. Yeah, but this That's song... I, I know. I mean, it's sad that so much weird shit happened before. Like, honestly, in my opinion, this album was too long. And we again, we'll get to the album as a whole. And I wish that this had happened earlier. I wish that these songs had maybe even started it off so it had that energy at the very beginning to enthrall to me. Us up. Maybe then, that would actually be Then, better, like, yeah. bring us down slowly or something because mm -hmm. I don't like the, the direction it's gone. But I like the fact that at least, honestly, since about the halfway point, there's been more songs I've been liking than disliking. And it's the first half of the album I had an issue with. Now, this, this song here is possibly my favorite of the last three that I've heard. It's still not a perfect five because it's got this corny cheesiness to his lyrics that I'm not a huge fan of. But otherwise, it's everything. It's got like the nicest fucking feeling. Like it's a four and a half. Hell, even a 4.6 just to give it a little bit above the last two, you know? I, I don't, I, it's arbitrary. Fuck off. But at the end of the day, I appreciated this one. And I can tell you that I'm going to go back to these three tracks a lot more often when I want that nice, aggressive, I want a headbang kind of feel. I gave it a 3.5.
be oh you know be nice 3.6 now the reason why i give it that is because like i took in like I, like i said this affects my grade because i look into the cd now and i'm just like why does it take so long why has it been like this like why are you giving me teasers why are you teasing me at the end of the cd with great songs yeah like i'm disappointed in it now um it has affected me but as a general song it was very good it was very uplifting not uplifting like what message but uplifting like you want to jam to it like okay. you said you want, you picked yourself in a mosh maybe moshing yeah but it was a good song it was fun energetic it deserves credit for its credit is due so you know what 3.6 3.6 all right so one more one more and it's when the fever broke when the fever broke um i have to say i like this is the last song I very mellow like it, it does bring you down in a good way can because it probably wouldn't have been wise to end with one of the Ooh. previous three <laughs> and i realized that the cd is like kind of like drugs a little bit yeah because you take it and you're like okay hey, you're not gonna have and then you're like whatever and then you get highest at a point and now you're finally you're coming down your high and you're like oh, just no, like, like and you want to eat a cheeseburger or something you're just kind of like sitting there at the end like yeah it's not over yet but i don't really feel it no more yeah also don't do drugs um, <laughs> i feel like this song is a very lukewarm experience it's six and a half minutes it's fucking long too long and it doesn't get like terribly boring to me it it's not work. I, I don't agree I feel like it expresses this pain Corey's feeling really well, and it's got this melancholy, morose, kind of evolves over. And you like to drink Chardonnay, don't you? No. Oh. I just like good language. And uh, I just, I don't know. I don't really feel like I could I could like listen to this all the time, but I do feel like it has a mood that it captures really well. <laughs> this is shave your bald music. You know why? Nah, man. You know why? Because you gotta be very calm and mellow, and you're like, if you nick yourself, you're depressed. Nah, this is more like <laughs> when you're having one of those like fucking wanna feel mopey days. Sometimes you just wanna feel fucking melancholy, and you listen to all the saddest shit you can fucking Breaking find. Up. <laughs> yeah, like that kind of a vibe. I would put this song on a playlist like that because it's got like I put it right next to the Stone Sour classic Bother, which is just like apathetic suicidal type shit. And uh, it was a great song. I fucking love it. Don't hate the internet. But uh, for real, I don't feel like this is a perfect song. I feel like it's just kind of a well, good Is there engine. really a perfect song or is just a song so good that you'll give it a five? I really, really fucking like the, the Rose Red and Violent Blue track. I thought that was extremely well made. Okay, well made. Close to perfection. Really per okay, close, but you can't really say it's perfection. You're right. Nothing on this album is perfection, but this is farther from the mark than the other one. I gave it a four. I thought it was well made. I thought for six and a half minutes, I could listen to it beginning to end and not skip it, mm -hmm. which is rare for that length for me. I have short attention span and it's just not like over the top enthralling. I had some valuable points there, my good friend. I uh, thought the songs was very mellow, very relaxed. It was pretty cool. It wasn't the greatest song, wasn't the worst song. I enjoyed it. Uh, you know what? A surprising ending to a really questionable CD. Right. I gave it a four. Okay, so I guess that's uh, the end of our album review of Stone Sour's Hydrograd. Um, but you know what? I'm going to say something to the people out there that might give me a little bit of a hard time because of my grading and stuff. I will actually go back and listen to another CD of theirs so I can give them fair judgment. I should have done that. check out again. Come Whatever, man. I should, what, what, you want me to come on? I'll, I'll give you the CD to listen to. Mm -hmm. um, so there, we're here at the album review time, my good friend. I gave this a 3.9 when all said and done. Those last few tracks really lifted the, the grade to a close to four. Because the first seven, man, it probably would have been like a three-ish, three and a half maybe. And it really raised the average. I feel like this is a s album where there are songs you will like on it. But as a whole album experience, it's not the greatest. It's it's a clunky, lackluster album in general with a few good songs and a lot of lame ones. Okay, well, I gave it a 2.75. Sure. Because like, uh, even though I had a couple songs or two or three songs that I liked, the CD was very lackluster. It was very bland. It was very like uh, juvenile. It was very questionable. The artist uh, obviously had something going on maybe and... He didn't know how to express himself as self. Like, he felt like a big child. Mm. Um, uh, to the bandmates, you guys did excellent work with everything with the instruments, to the background, to the vocal, uh, not to the vocals, to the rhythm and to the speed, to the playing of every single strum. And it was great. So to just to the instrument part, you got like a perfect part, a perfect mark. It I will always really respect well music. But uh, just the message, there was no message being delivered clearly enough. It Or it was, he was trying to be clear, but it made me like, wow, you need to grow the fuck up. 
uh, you know, yeah, that's it. To the stone sour people, I'm sorry if you don't agree with my mark. Please, you know, comment and educate me. I want to be educated, but do it in a polite way because I'll come back with you a nice, polite answer. We always comment back. We're yeah. not going to attack. We're not going to, you know, go with you guys also, if anything. We have feel fun. free to hate. I love the internet points. That's yeah, but hate, but hate, hate with the good criticism. Just yeah, don't be man. like, you fucking suck, you fat guys. Yeah, if you want to do that, go ahead. No, but, okay. like, if you really want to, it's just that, hit the slate and you have a like button. There's there we're still going to do this. We're going to review the next one, the next one, the next one. We're going to get better over time because it's a learning experience and shit. I wish I could. You know what? We try to come out very fast. So, uh, unfortunately, today, uh, not unfortunately. Nah, we're good. We're good. No, no, I'm not talking about that. Like, uh, I'd like to give more time to these CDs, mm. but we want to yeah. come out so you guys get reviews. That's true. I mean, the problem is, like, listen, we record this Saturday, Saturday morning after it comes out on a Friday. There is a limited time to absorb the music. Mm -hmm. So consider it a bit of a first reaction. But at the same time, you can tell the difference between high quality and a rushed album, even with your first couple of listens. Like, I don't listen to any of these once. All of them, at least two, three times I listen to them. And nah, man, this is not an album I'm coming back to. No. However, you still gave it a good mark, though. Which because respectful. there are songs I would come back to, not the album. All right. But, yo, if you like what we do, please hit the like button. Subscribe. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Share it with your peoples. Let us know what you think in the comments, as we said multiple times. And uh, we'll catch you next week with another rock album that we'll fuck with.